Hi friends! Welcome back to SW Adventures. I've had a rough week at work and I am seven days away from um, my next cruise, which I cannot wait. And the excitement of my cruise made me think about what I wanted to know when I was a first time cruiser. What should I pack? What should I leave at home? Um, and so I'd hoped to share that with y'all on how I pack um, and some little tips that I have along the way. So let's get started. So here is my tip list for cruising, but before we get started, please like and subscribe to my channel if you like what I'm doing, and uh, let me know if there's anything specific you want to see as far as cruising goes. So tip number one, know before you go. What I mean by that is check with your travel advisor if you have one. If not, check with your um, specific cruise line that you're going on on uh, their specific dress codes. So some dress codes are more relaxed and some are... Um, more formal. The key to this though is that most cruises have theme nights so make sure that you are checking on that so like for instance they may have an 80s night or an all-white night um, and those are super fun to participate in so know before you go what the theme is so you know how to pack for that. One tip that I have for this is that you can uh, get on Facebook if you're part of the Facebook world and uh, most cruises have a web page for that specific cruise that are just for the people going on that cruise. They're usually closed uh, pages that you have to be invited to so you try to join and they will um, the ad admin will allow you to join the group but basically what you'll do is you'll find the cruise that you're going on with the date that you're going on and then you get to meet all of the people that are going on the cruise that are in that group. Um, so that's a super fun way to meet all of the friends that you want to meet and it's a super fun way to figure out who your cruise director might be and exactly what theme nights they might have. So tip number two, you want to choose your outfits ahead of time um, depending on what you're going to be doing on the cruise. So for instance, you're going to need outfits for sea days, you're going to need outfits for port days and for any excursions that you might want to do for your dinners and then any onboard activities that you might be doing. So think about that ahead of time to make sure that uh, you're packing accordingly. So tip number three, let's decide what extras you need to take on the ship. We've got your clothing uh, semi figured out as far as the basics go, what you need for day, what you need for night, what you need for ports, all of that. Um, so let's talk about what extras you might wanna take. Obviously you wanna pack your normal toiletries. So your toothpaste, uh, toothbrush, all of those little things that you would normally use on a daily basis. Keep in mind that if you are a simple person and you don't want your extra shampoo and conditioner, um, all of those specific body washes or face washes or anything like that, um, there is an all-in-one shampoo, conditioner, mouthwash, toothpaste, uh, body wash, all of that in the shower. It's not actually toothpaste or mouthwash, so please don't use it for that, but there is an all-in-one conditioner and um, body wash shampoo that you can use um, if you're not real particular about what you want. So you don't absolutely have to pack that stuff, but if you're like me, I like to have my own products and I'll pack those. So some other extras that are super important to pack um, is your charging cable. So make sure you have all your charging cables if you have a watch and you need to charge it or your phones, uh, media, anything that you need to charge. But keep in mind that your rooms do not have very many outlets to charge these things. Um, so another little tip that I have for you is to pack um, rechargeable battery packs, something like this, and this is just a cheap one from Walmart. I don't know that I spent $10 on this, but pack a few of these so that you can charge these and then carry that around with you and multiple people can charge. Another option is um, this USB port charging thing. 
um, you can charge multiple things at one time off of this one and it's plugged into your outlet. So you have multiple USB ports here to charge from. Um, I believe I got this on Amazon for less than 20 bucks and I will link that below for you to look at if you're interested in this. But this is a great way to charge multiple things with one outlet. So just remember that there's not that many outlets. So if you have multiple people in a room that need to be charging things or multiple things that need to be charged, bring other options as far as charging goes. So a few other accessories that I like to take that as a first time cruiser I did not take and I realized along the way why they're important and why I like to take them. But the first one is a clothespin. So the clothespin I like to use most if not all of your cabins are going to have a clothesline, typically it's in the shower. Uh, your showers are pretty small space. So if you don't bring the clothespin, you're just hanging your bathing suits or your wet uh, clothing over that clothing line. Um, and there's not much space there. So if you bring the clothespin, you can actually put more stuff on there. It helps it dry a little bit quicker. I get my clothespins at Dollar Tree for a dollar and there's a bunch of them. So, I mean, I just keep reusing them. If they break, oh well, I've got more. The other one is towel clips. So towel clips were something that I was like, I don't need. Um, but I promise you, you will thank me after you've been on a deck of a cruise ship for an extended period of time and you're trying to get your towel to go up over the um, chair and stay there. Or when you're on a windy beach, it's really nice to be able to put these towel clips on there. And when you get up to go get you a drink or do whatever activity you're going to do, these are kind of like a placeholder, even though you can't hold a place on a cruise ship. If you're just moving quickly um, to come back to your seat, you'll be able to identify your chair fairly quickly with your little towel clips. Again, I get these little towel clips at Dollar Tree for a dollar, and I think it was a pack of eight that came in this for a dollar. So even if they break, I've got several more. Um, also, you can check the link below, and uh, there's some really great options on Amazon as well. So tip number four, let's talk about your shoes. So you're packing and you don't wanna fill up your luggage with shoes. So first, remember what I said earlier, make sure that you are thinking about all of the things you're gonna be doing on the cruise as far as your excursions go, um, port days, sea days, what all are you gonna be doing? Then these are my tips for packing shoes and it should work for anything that you're doing, um, whether it's a strenuous activity or just lounging. So I pack three pairs of shoes, four pairs of shoes. I pack four pairs of shoes. I pack a pair of tennis shoes, athletic shoes of some sort for those that wanna do anything athletic or just walk around or just something comfortable to walk around at the port. Um, my tip to that is that you want to try to wear those on the ship if you can so that you don't have to take up that room in your um, carry-on or luggage. Um, so you wanna to try to do your bulky ones by wearing those on. The second pair of shoes I pack is a pair of flip-flops. So just a casual pair of flip-flops that will match everything. These are perfect because I can wear them at the pool or I can wear them with something cute. They've got black and they've got brown in them. Um, so I can wear those pretty much anywhere and they're comfortable to walk around. Like I said, lounge at the pool, um, pretty much anything but your basketball athletic type activities. Um, and then the third pair of shoes I'm gonna bring is these. Now, you really could get away with only bringing these and not bringing your flip-flops or vice versa. I like to bring um, some sort of uh, water type shoe, I guess. This is not really a water shoe, uh, but I can wear it at the beach and it's going to stay on because it's got the back strap and it can be cleaned very easily. So I don't have to take them off. I don't like to be barefoot in the beach. Um, so this is perfect for me. Again, you don't have to bring these. You could just get away with one or the other. And then the last pair of shoes that I like to take is a pair of dress shoes. My tip to that is whether you're a man or a woman, try to bring one pair of dress shoes for all of your outfits. So basically tailor your outfits around one pair of dress shoes. Um, you don't wanna have to bring a fancy pair of dress shoes and a casual pair of dress shoes. Try to make all of your outfits match, your dinner outfits match that one pair of dress shoes. So you don't have to make uh, take multiple pairs of dress shoes. All right, tip number five, clothing specific tips on what to pack for your clothing. So for men, I recommend for your dinner outfits, bring um, a pair of shorts, a pair of jeans, uh, maybe a pair of slacks. So let's say you bring all three of those. 
bring three of those, one of each, and then mix and match your shirts, shirts with those things so that you're not taking a pair of shorts for every shirt um, and that will minimize how much you have to take. Keep in mind, you're not wearing these for very long. Um, you're going to dinner and maybe out after dinner, but you're gonna be on the ship. It's not like you're getting dirty. I would highly recommend mix and matching your shirts with your shorts so that you don't have to take as many of uh, bottoms as you do your tops. For women, this is a little more difficult because a lot of us like to dress in uh, a dress at night for dinner or maybe a jumpsuit or anything like that. So it's a little bit diff more difficult to mix and match. You could do it if you plan on wearing jeans with multiple different shirts, that would be perfect. You could wear one pair of jeans with several different shirts if that's what you wanna do. Um, but this really works for your day outfits. So uh, for me, I like to pack one pair of shorts, maybe a white pair of shorts that's really cute, and a uh, jean pair of shorts. And then I'll switch up my Hawaiian shirts or my cute little shirts to go with the each pair of shorts instead of packing a pair of shorts for each shirt that I bring. Another tip is that you wanna pack at least one thing that's warm in case you hit weather that's different than what you were expecting and it's cooler. Of course, I'm talking about warmer climates, uh, for your cruises, which is really all I do. But if you go on some, uh, you know, Alaskan cruise, or if you're on the Western side, um, and you do some sort of a Western Pacific cruise, make sure you check that weather ahead of time and you may need to pack more warm things um, than what I'm suggesting. All right, so tip number six, bringing drinks on board. So most cruise lines, will allow you to bring some stuff on board. Maybe you didn't get the drink package and you wanna know what you can do um, to enjoy your soda that you would normally drink. So most cruise lines will allow you to bring one six pack of canned soda, seltzer, whatever you wanna bring onto the ship that is non-alcoholic. They will also allow you to bring one bottle of wine. So with that being said, keep in mind that if you do decide to bring a bottle of wine um, on the ship, that there might be a corkage fee if you decide to drink that wine in any restaurants or bars or anything like that. Another suggestion I have is if you do have a drink package, when you go to order a drink, order a bottle of water as well. Um, they typically will give that to you at the same time and you can store those to take on shore excursions or at night when you get thirsty and it really maximizes what you can do with your drink package. If you do not have a drink package, most of the time you can pre-order um, cases of water, so a 12 pack of water or whatever, to be delivered to your stateroom before you get there. And it's a pretty reasonable uh, price. Um, the cruise that I'm about to go on in seven days, I did that and it was only I think $5 for a 12 pack, which was totally worth it to make sure that at nighttime when I get thirsty, I can get up and get my bottle of water and it's right there already ready for me. Tip number five, six, seven, bring cash. So I say that because on several cruises, especially as my first time cruising, if you see somebody on those ships, they work so hard um, to make sure that your vacation is perfect. So I really recommend bringing some small bills, show them your gratitude of the work that they do. They're away from their families for an extended period of time and uh, they really work hard to make everything perfect for you. So bring some cash for that. Cash is also good for ports. So the last cruise I went on, um, I had forgot to notify my credit card company that I was going out of the country and I got stopped at multiple areas because my card was denied. So I did have cash on me, which was great, and I was able to pay with cash and then figure out my card situation later, but you don't wanna be stuck in that situation, so it's really great to have it at the ports. Yes, the ports will allow you to use your cards. Make sure that you let your banks know ahead of time that you're traveling abroad, otherwise, uh, you might be in the situation I was in where it's constantly getting declined. Um, but if you have cash on you, then you don't have to worry about that. So bring cash. So I think that about covers it um, for the tips that I have for you for packing on your first cruise um, or things that I wish I had known for my first cruise. I know for my first cruise, I overpacked a lot, but there was a lot of things that I didn't really know that I could take or that I needed. So I hope this has helped you um, be able to pack for your first cruise. So if you found these tips helpful, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought about them or if you have any helpful tips for other people, let me know that as well. And 
hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see any other videos that I'm posting, um, hit that notification bell and uh, to let you be notified anytime I drop a new video. And also, if you need help planning your first cruise, or maybe it's your fifth cruise and you still don't want to have to deal with all the planning, I am a certified cruise assistant and I would love to help you plan your next cruise. All of my contact info will be listed below so that you can get a hold of me and let me know what your dreams are of a cruise and let me help you plan that. And remember, a life with adventure is a life well lived, so let me help you plan your next adventure. Be my friend!